sure my camera on right there. I know I look ridiculous, but I'm up late. So let me shrink this down a little bit. So we finna have some fun. We got us another live discussion. Another live one, right? And today we're gonna be talking about the Royal Task Force. The Zero Squad. Now ever since episode uh, seven of Bleach, the Thousand Year Blood War, you know, things have been going kind of fast. And I noticed something as I went back and I read the chapters of the Thousand Year Blood War, you know, just to familiarize myself with them. They're skipping a lot of filler. Like they're skipping a ton of filler with the Thousand Year Blood War anime. Um, a, a lot of filler that was in the manga, they did not even touch. For example, the backstory for Roy Lloyd and Lloyd Lloyd, the guys who were able to change into people that they seen, you know, Lloyd Lloyd, he went up against Kenpachi Zaraki. He turned into, you know, he changed into Kenpachi Zaraki. Um, and Roy Lloyd, who had imitated Yuhaba uh, during, the, during that first fight with Yamamoto when he used his Bankai. So that that whole backstory, that whole chapter got, they didn't even go to the, go into the backstory. Um, I think with this Thousand Year Blood War in the anime, they're assuming that people are already familiar with the, the Thousand Year Blood War manga. And um, oh, let me check something real quick. Okay, that, that is my microphone. All right, I had to make sure the microphone was on correct. You know, that, that was on the Yeti. But sometimes it'll connect to like another microphone that I have either through the the webcam or through my laptop. And I just got to make sure that it's connected to the right one. But yeah, one thing I noticed that they're doing, one, is that they're skipping a lot of filler. Two, each episode of the Thousand Year Blood War uh, anime, they're going like two to three chapters in. Now, if, if you watched episode seven, you know, this is the episode that, you know, Yamamoto got killed. Ichigo shows up. He sees Byakuya uh, basically beat up, basically on the verge of death. And um, he goes to fight Yuha himself. Now, that's actually two chapters. To be more specific, it's chapters, I think, 513 and 514 in the, um, in the manga. So there, so every episode at the very least is two chapters in the manga. So every anime episode is like two, three, two chapters or more. Now this next episode is called Zero Mix, and that's actually chapter five hundred eighteen in the manga. That's the title of a of the uh, chapter five hundred eighteen in the manga. So what we're looking at is what's going to happen in the next episode. Episode eight is. If they're following the, the the pattern that I think they're following, well, for starters, they already released the steel shots for episode uh, eight, and I don't think I saved it nowhere, and I feel stupid. Mm. Yeah, this poor scholarship right there. I gotta kick myself in the ass for that. But uh, they sh they did show the steel shots. It was a, some Twitter page that did it, and. They showed one of the members of the Zero Squad and Ichigo having his head wrapped and in the manga at that time, what's what I believe they're going to do for episode eight is that they're going to go through episodes five, 15 to five, 18. I, I think they're going to cover all those chapters in episode eight. So the way it starts off is that Rukia and uh, not, not Rukia and Renji, they're injured. They're in the hospital. In, uh, in the research division, uh, Squad 12's uh, barracks, they're in a the hospital. Byakuya gets picked up. You know, he's all bandaged up and beat up. Ichigo, his Zombok toe is, uh, is, uh, is broken, so it has to go get fixed. The Zero Division actually comes down from the Royal Palace in this giant pillar called the Tenchiru. And they introduce themselves. Now, the, the identity of the Zero Squad is actually, uh, it's actually secret. You know, a lot of the, the seats in the divisions, they don't really know about the Zero Squad. It's basically common knowledge amongst the captains and the, uh, and the vice captains that may have overheard it. So they're a very secret division that a lot of people don't know. And in the Bleach anime, actually, 
the first mention of the Zero Squad was, was episode 206. It was the beginning of the Pendulum arc that went back and told the stories of basically how uh, Aizen turned, you know, Shinji, uh, Shinji and those guys into visors when he was trying to fuse the power of a hollow with the power of a Shinigami. And um, it, it, it basically told that backstory. It was during the fake Karakura Town arc when the visors went to uh, fight alongside the current Gotei 13 in, in the fake Karakura Town arc. So that pendulum arc goes from episode 206 to 212. It's only six episodes. But that first episode, this is when Hikafune, uh, she was the one mentioned at the time to went to have joined the Royal Task Force or the Zero Division. And in this video, we're gonna, just, we're gonna uh, go through all the members of the Zero Division and get people familiar with uh, what's about to come up in Bleach. So without further ado, let me change my screens. So who is the Zero Division? Well, the Zero Division are guys who are basically people who are known for making considerable contributions to the history of Soul Society. The entire soul society. Um, each of them has, each of them has been handpicked by the soul king, and they pretty much guard the royal palace, the royal family, and, and that's pretty much it. They just guard the soul king, the royal palace, and the royal family. That's their job, and they're so strict on that that even. If anything else is going on in the Serite, such as like Aizen or anybody else, you know, they don't interfere with that at all. It's not their job. So, but their power supersedes that of the, the, the Gote 13 combined. Mind you, this is with Yamamoto. You know, the, the, these are only five people. They don't have armies. Well, one of them kind of has an army with them, but they're basically individuals, five individuals that have known to made considerable contribution considerable contributions to the soul society and we're going to go through each of them and um we're going to talk about them so as you see right here this is the royal palace that the soul king lives in and each of these five little discs that you see right here let me zoom in a little bit each of these five discs that you see right here these are cities that each of the members of the of the zero division they control each of these they control each of them and they have their own little cities and their own little you know kingdoms as they call it in this big pillar right here is where the soul king resides so they basically have um their own basically they're like kings and queens of their own little uh area but one major point and i'm kind of spoiling something a little bit so don't kick me in my ass too bad and i found this out years later after reading the manga there's a light novel called uh let me see if i can get that name right they do not what's that light novel um there's a light novel that i bookmark i think let's see if i can find it bookmark Give me one second. I should have pulled this up earlier. Let me make sure I can get it up, though. Yeah, okay. So there's a light novel called Bleach, We Do Not Always Love You. Now, I encourage people not to read this because this is actually taking place after the events of the, um, of the Thousand Year Blood War. It kind of spoils the... Um, you know who becomes a couple uh it gives the backstory on a lot of the characters as well as gives the backstory of the soul king and who he was before he became the soul king and how he got in that position so that's the name of the i'm not going to show it on screen because it's going to kind of reveal some things so but yeah that's the name of the light novel bleach we do not and not is spelled k-m-t we do not always love you so that kind of gives the backstory on the Soul King. But, uh, 
But yeah, like their duty is to guard the royal palace, guard the soul king, and protect the royal family. Anything outside of that, they do not do. So to get started, um, and just to show this, I should have showed this earlier. This giant pillar right here, this is called, this is the Tenjiru, the Tenshiru that I spoke on earlier. This is their method of trans of uh, a transportation from the Soul King's Palace down to the Serite. So if you guys remember doing the first, now remember what I said back in my last video that I did on Bleach. If you go back and you watch the main storyline arcs of Bleach, basically any question that you had for the thousand year blood war is going to get answered and the the pillar is it's almost like a one-way trip the they have to get launched back into the sky of the soul king palace of the, of the royal palace in order to gain access you know in order to get back to it and the way they do that is with the shiva clan now if you remember that girl that launched ichigo and um and Rukia and uh, Ichigo, uh, Orihime and uh, Chad and all those guys when they were trying to get over the wall of the Serite in order to go rescue Rukia um, when they were getting ready to execute her. They're the Sheba clan and they actually are, they have a special task where anytime the Zero Division comes down, they, they're the ones that, that have the responsibility of launching this pillar back up to the Soul King's palace. So they are actually going to be the ones responsible for shooting them back up. Now, to get to the actual members of these guys right here, let me, oh, let me get this. I don't know why the hell that happened. Okay, so let me move my camera over. So introducing the actual members of the soul of the uh, Zero Division. Now. Again, each of these members made considerable contributions to the Soul Society, and they have certain titles that they that were bestowed upon them. And we're going to go through that. So this is the leader of the Zero Division. This is the first guy that was brought up there. Um, he has the title of the monk who calls the real name, and this is Ichibe Higusube, and he's actually one of the five special war powers that Yuhaba had named. And it was because of his wisdom. Now, this is the guy. He named everything in the Soul Society. Everything. Appreciate the star put. Um, this is the guy. He named everything in the Soul Society. You know, he didn't necessarily create everything in the Soul Society, but he named everything in the Soul Society. I mean, he named the Heori, the Heori. He named uh, the Soul Swords, the, the word Zangbato. He named it that. Even in the Shikai, Bankai, he gave it those names, um, as well as several other things. Like, he's the one who named everything. And he pretty much has the ability to talk to any Zongbakto to find out real information. I kind of spoiled something there just then. He can find out anything about any sword. He has that ability to connect with any sword. So, let's say if it's somebody who had a sword that didn't want to necessarily you know because the process of a shinigami learning their bankai is that they basically have to have a connection with them and then the sword revealed his name to him and that's how they gain access to that power he can actually connect with any sword any zombakuto and learn a name on his own and he's actually going to help somebody get that so you keep your eyes out for that um so we have so that's uh Ichibei Hyusube. So the next up we have one of my personal favorites. This is uh, the Divine General of the East, Zero Division First Officer, who holds the title of the Hot Spring Demon, Tenjiro Kirinji. Now, this guy, even though he wasn't the one um, that created the healing spells, he kind of pioneered the healing spells and that was the contribution he made to soul society that got him into the soul king's palace that's what got his attention of the soul king and got him into the zero division now the thing about him is that he has in his palace right he has two hot springs 
He has he has one called the White Bone Hot Spring, and he has one called the Blood Bone Hot Spring. And a person needs like special unless they have a considerable amount of Riatsu that their body can handle, they need special gear to even enter those hot springs. So Rukia, um, Ichigo, and Byakuya, they're gonna go to those hot springs and they're gonna get healed by them. But the average person can't go into those hot springs because the hot springs will rip them apart. But basically how it works is this, with the white bone hot spring, it pulls out the blood and the damaged Riatsu of the person that gets submerged in the water. With the blood pool hot spring, what it does is it refills the body up with blood. And, you know, depending on how damaged the person is, they have to go back and forth between the hot springs in order to to heal themselves properly. So that's what he's able to do. Um, his Zanbok toe is actually like a wooden paddle. Um, and I can't remember the name of it. Matter of fact, let me see if I can pull up that. I think I had a list of what their kingdoms look like, if I'm not mistaken. Um, give me a second. I got to click off all this extra shit. Like, we're going to pull this up. Can I see it? Can I find what that, the white bone and, uh, I know I've seen the red blood pod one. Let's see. I don't think I can find that. Yeah, I don't think I can find those pictures anymore. Let me see if I can go to gallery. Maybe I'll have them in here. Okay, here, here we go. Let me bring this picture up. Chrome. Okay. Let me lock this. I got a lot going on on the screen right now. Forgive me. Alright, that should be good enough. Ooh, no, get back. Alright, right here. So this is the White Bone Hill. White Bone Hill. So this is a hot spring that, as you can see, this is a shot from the manga where Ichigo uh, is in there healing himself. Again, what this does is, is that it pulls out the damaged Ryatsu and the blood of the person that sits in it and um it basically takes all the pain away basically you know and um there's a red blood hot spring i don't think i see a picture of that but here we go right here this is uh this is these outfits right here these are actually the special outfits that need to be made for people who may not be able to handle it because anybody who doesn't have whose body can't hold a considerable amount of Riatsu, they'll get turned they they will get torn apart by those springs. And I don't see uh any body um damn. But in this shot right here, and I'm glad I pulled this up, he was the guy that taught uh Unohana the healing spells that she uses. So even though he wasn't the one that invented the healing spells, he actually was the one that taught Unohana, you know, everything that she knows, but he does it on a far bigger level. Um, hence the reason why they're coming down from the soul King's palace to take Byakuya, Rukia, Renji and um, Ichigo back up there to get healed because she's unable to do it. She has a different purpose now. You know, she's not a healer no more. She has to go back to who she was because she got a task that she has to do. But without spoiling that, we're going to click off of that real quick before I get too ahead of myself. But yeah, that was his contribution. I'm not talking about the Zanbok toes at all because I think that's one of those things that is best uh, experienced from watching or reading the manga. 
I don't want to be the one to spoil it for you, but their but their uh, Zombot toes have his Zombot toe has a pretty uh, unique ability. But um, going on to the next one. So next up, and I'm I hate that I'm putting this picture up because I couldn't find another one. So y'all gonna have to be easy on me. So next up we have the Divine General of the South, the Zero Division Second Officer. The ruler of grain, Hiriko Hikifune. Now, when you go back and you watch episode 206, the first episode of the mini p- pendulum arc, uh, during the fake Kawakura Town arc, when they were, when the visors were getting ready to go fight Aizens alongside the Gotei 13, that first episode is actually the episode that they revealed that the Zero Squad or the Royal Task Force existed. Um, And she was the one that was mentioned who had just went to go join at that time. So if we're just looking at the numbers, she was the second one to join the Royal uh, Task Force and the ones after this came later. You know, or maybe they were already there and they had those seats and the second officer seat was like, you know, unoccupied whatever the case may be or maybe they fought for it i don't know even but that's just speculation but regardless her contribution was that she created the artificial soul now if you remember there's like this lion teddy bear like this lion teddy uh stuffed animal named gone in bleach and he has this little green pill that allows him to you know be alive the artificial soul she was the one that created that she was the one that invented that so she, that was her contribution to the soul society and why she was admitted into the zero division um now you notice that there's two different pictures two different you know looks of her the thing about her is she has a massive amount of riatsu a massive amount of riatsu and because of her riatsu she has to eat a lot um she's able to create food from her body as well uh by using her riatsu so anytime she does that, she looks like the image on the on the left where she's more slim down, looks more beautiful. You know, she's not as plump, more busty, etc. And on the right is when she actually is healthy. This is the first time we're going to see her. But um, another ability that she has is that she's able to create uh, pretty much like Riatsu trees, like trees that can absorb Riatsu from any source. So keep that in mind when you see her fight um i doubt they're going to get to the point of fighting in the next episode but if they're going by the pattern that i think they're going by then episode eight is going to be from chapter five i would say five fifteen to five eighteen considering that chapter five eighteen is actually the name of the next episode of the thousand year blood war anime So, again, keep that in mind. I said it a couple times already. So, next up, we have the... Oh, did I click something wrong? No. So, next up, we have the Divine General of the West. uh, Zero Division Officer. Third Officer. And the God of the Sword. Oetsu Namaya. Now, as the name states, God of the Sword, he is the one that created the Zongbato. Not only that, but he also created the what's called the Asuchi. And I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Now, the Asuchi is like a blank soul that gets put into the sword. And then whoever obtains that sword, their Riatsu actually changes it into the form that they that they use it as. But he was the one that invented that. He created the, the sword, the soul sword, you know, even though it was named by uh, it was named by Ichibei, the Zangbato. He was the one that invented the sword, the, the, the sword itself. So that was his contribution that got him admitted into the Zero Division. Now, you would think, you would think, this is the interesting thing about Omaya, uh, that uh, this is the interesting thing about Oetsu. You would think that because he was the one that invented the Zanbakuto, that he would have like the most powerful Shikai and Bankai, or at least a unique one. He's strong as hell, but not for the reason that you think. See, even though he was the one that created the Zanbakuto, 
his Zongbato is actually what he calls a failed Zongbato. It doesn't have a Shikai, it doesn't have a Bankai. The reason why he considered this, he considers it a failed Zongbato is because he can't fuse it with any um with a blank soul. He can't fuse it with a blank soul. But what's unique about his sword is that it is so sharp that it doesn't rust. You know, any liquid that gets on it just falls off of it. And it's so sharp that a sheath can't hold it. Actually, he has like this tub of like gel, like this tub of jelly that he has to contain it in just because it's just that sharp. It can't like a, a sheath can't hold it because if you try to put it in a sheath, it'll just slice right through it. So he doesn't have a Shikai or Bankai, but he has the most dangerous sword I think anybody could have because it's just that sharp and, um, you know, and just that waterproof or liquid proof. So that's the thing about him. Um, and last but not least, we have the Divine General of the North, Zero Division 4th Officer, who holds the title of the Great Weave Guard, Sinjumaru Shutara. Now, even though it's not stated what contribution that she made, and they may change this in the anime, um, but in the manga, they never said exactly what she did. But with the name, the Great Weave Guard, it's, it's possible that she was the one that created the Hayori that the, um, that all the captains wear. And I, 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 in theory, I think that's one of the contributions that she made. Also, she's the one that, uh, she's able to create the outfits. Remember when I was talking about, uh, the hot springs from the first officer? Uh, she, if, if I'm not mistaken, and I could be wrong, don't quote me on this. I believe she's the one that creates the outfits that helps people who aren't strong enough to help the hot, who, the people who aren't strong enough to handle the hot springs, the outfits that they need to wear. I believe she's the one that makes them. So that's my, if I remember correctly, she's the one that makes them, but she's the only one that kind of has like a group with her, so to speak. And I do put that in quotations because y'all y'all will understand when that fight happens. You know, Yuha, they're already on their way to the royal palace anyway. Um, because they gotta go meet the Soul King for a purpose. And um Yeah. She is the one that when they went down to the Serate to, to meet the the remaining Gote thirteen, she actually had a talk with uh with a uh, squad 12 captain Myri where she basically broke in to his research lab but she did mention that when she was there it wasn't that easy to get into so they did mention at one point that all of these guys were you know former captains of the Gote 13 that ended up getting promoted to the zero division as far as which, you know, squad they was the head of, it's not really told, but Sinjumaru, I think she at one point was the head of squad 12. Um, and it was believed that these guys were a part of the first um, line of captains for the Gote 13. Of course, we already had the video that revealed that we were, that myth got busted of course during um during episode seven of the thousand year blood war they already revealed who they were and um just keep your eye out for the next video because i they actually revealed the names of those original captains so this is just a small introduction to the zero division of royal task force hope you guys enjoyed the video remember be humble in victory be gracious in defeat but show no mercy in battle. World Warriors Collective. Peace.